NYC at 50. Many social media platforms have been flooded with image memories from people who have successfully passed through the National Youth Service Corps program in commemoration of NYC at 50 years. Admits the different images from people that brought back, you know, some nostalgia. Many people shared their NYC experience. There are several key lessons to draw from these experiences. And if we were to make progressive headway with the NYC program, we must go back to the drawing board. The NYC program was created on the 22nd of May, 1973, as an avenue for the reconciliation, reconstruction, and rebuilding of the nation after the Civil War. It was established based on the decree number 24, which stated that the scheme was created with a view to the proper encouragement and development of common ties among the youths of Nigeria. And of course, the promotion of national unity. Some years ago, there had been a movement to scrap the NYC program, and it had more negative impact than the intended positive impact for which it was originally designed in 1973. It stems from the fact that many young people wasted 11 months of their lives sitting in a remote village where they were literally incapacitated. I mean, if we think about it deeply, we all know that the NYC program needs a lot of facelift. I personally do not hold the opinion that it should be scrapped, but we can do so much to revamping it into something much better. The program affords the government an opportunity to get real-time feedback from core members, but I doubt that the government has explored this opportunity. These feedbacks will become the necessary tool to rebuilding and restructuring the NYC program. The program also reveals how much broken our educational system is. There is very low premium on education. There's also the issue of you know, national safety and national security, which has always been there. I strongly believe that the NYC program is a massive opportunity for cultural awareness and integration across board. People shouldn't have to influence their deployment and posting, but it's happening to you this very day. We won't pretend that we don't mostly know why people influence their deployment. There's a lot of untapped potential with the NYC program. And I am specially calling on the government this very minute to invite relevant key stakeholders to take another critical look into the program. So um, I'm going to start with Elijah. You served, you know, um, during the National Youth Service Corps program, right? Yeah. What was the experience for you? Oh, I served in uh, 2017, 2018. Awesome. August 2017 to July 2018 in uh, Anambra, specifically Onicha. Uh, well, aside from the nice food, Ufaku and rice, you know, <laughs> I don't joke with that. Yeah, aside from that's the like nice cultural food, integration yeah, right Yeah, cultural integration. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm able to go and test my Igbo understanding. You know, actually, I, I can, I understand Igbo language to a very good extent, and uh, I can write to a very good extent. I may not be able to speak fluently, but it was an opportunity for me to test my my, <laughs> but but the, the good thing is during the period of my service, I met people from different parts of the world, um, Nigeria that came there to serve, and mm. of course we learned quite a lot of things, meeting people and the rest. But the service itself, the scheme itself, I think there should be, should be some overhauling. Mm. Let me give you an example. They want to emphasize skill acquisition because of uh, trying to give us this um, idea that don't expect the government to provide a job for you. Yeah. You can actually acquire skill. And, uh, and use this for your own economic advantage. But mm. the process by which they recruit people to give you such kind of, pro number one, the trainings are not sufficient enough. Timing and maybe some people are not really in tune with what they're in for. Yeah. So I think they can work with stakeholders to make it more meaningful. Over the years, NYC had, I wouldn't say it has outlived its purpose. This period that we're having problem of I don't want to use the word national disintegration, but mm. you know what I'm saying. Exactly. People saying, oh, 
this you are for so so tribe you don't yeah. marry this yeah. i think nyc scheme should be fostered mm. to help national integration but it should be revamped true it should be revamped because um i remember a case where you know when you go to the when we we're in camp you know we learned quite some things but if you check these things they are teaching you is it relevant to today's markets now those days if you go for and serve it has served this purpose they need teachers in villages and all those things yeah it's okay but right now we nigeria should not be dragged to that level just yeah. being a rural teacher that's all mm. you want to help the government in helping uh, educate children in mm. a rural environment what will the government do for you how can you be able to get into the 21st century business like era or True. skill recommended skill so i think the government should look into it fantastic and it's a good thing that some other countries are copy uh, i wouldn't say copying us but they're emulating us uh countries like uh, niger republic i think that was the time they came their president came to uh, Nigeria, I think some years back, where they wanted to launch their own national service. Even Ghana, Ghana does the same. Awesome. Ghana does the same. Other countries like Israel, South Korea, their own is more military-like. Yeah. But I think whatever is worth doing at all, is it's worth doing well. Wow, well. well, awesome. Like so let me come back to, to Mr. Stephen. So basically, right, uh, it's been a long time you served. I don't know if you can remember your experience. No. But, <laughs> but hold on. You know, so I'd like to share your experience and also what do you think? I mean, it would also be good to glean on, you know, several decades since you served mm. and then looking at what it is now, right? And how can we really tap into the full potential of this program? Okay, so I served in the last year of the 80s. And... Um, Where? In Niger State, Mina. Okay, Niger Mina. State. Oh, yeah. Now, my experiences, well... I think I found in the ordinary Nigerian there uh, um, a fellowship, a welcome. I mean, on the on the broad on a broad look at it, I was welcomed by people I did not know. Uh, once it was recognized that I was a youth copper. Uh, amenities were made, accommodation was made for me. Oh, mm -hmm. it's a youth copa, let's see what we can do and all that and all that. So on that level, just imagine, if people like us had not gone there, that, that, that just seeing people from another culture, just seeing other people would not have happened. So on that level, there's much to see is progressive about youth core. But then we lose a lot when, like you, we mentioned, you have these manipulations of you transfer, you are doing, uh, you are doing uh, redeployment and all these things. You miss the purpose. And these days it has become massive. Even that essence of mixing up with cultures that you don't know we miss it a lot um but you can't blame them now considering no. the what happened in 2011 in kaduna where core members were killed following the re-election of or mm. should i call it re-election okay following the election it was actually not a re very unfortunate of good luck jonathan very very young uh, very, very, un unfortunate. very unfortunate security concerns very unfortunate um also on another level i i want to take it from the um management level. Over the years, uh, I think also what has not been looked at is how NYC itself has been managed. Has it been prudently managed economically and all those, all those factors mm. need to be looked at. Uh, when you embark on such huge projects, mm there should be time when you come back and reflect on what you are doing. I don't think those, that kind of reflection has gone on with NYC. NYC is an offshoot of something old. America used to have what they called you Peace Corps, but they use it as an, as an instrument of diplomacy. Yeah. They take a young person who has graduated and bring him to your country to teach and all that. We in Nigeria here, we receive such people. They managed it up to a point, to the point they realized, okay, is it, are we getting the bang for the buck? 
mm. and they gradually did away with it. Like you said, other countries do military service. What other countries do with military services? They, they look at it and say, we are not constantly at war. Do we need a standing army of this proportion? Can we use young people coming up to be stopgap and to keep them in the army for as um, people who can be brought back? America does something like that. South Korea does something like that. And some other countries, Switzerland does something like that, where the bulk of the army is the youth. They are trained. They are part of the army for a, a number of years till they are 40. But they go to work. If there is a war, they could be called back. In that way, you are managing your resources mm -hmm. in terms of you are not wasting money, which is where I go back to the, what I was talking about, about fund management and all that. Because what, what they are doing, they are killing two birds with one stone. They are having an army at the same time. A working class people. Eh? Working class people and well, the army. I work with working class people and the army and all that. So we, they, those help their security along the line and all that. The issue of insecurity across the country is a big issue that will need us to reflect on the value of NYC. Nobody wants to train anybody and send him defenseless to a place where he's endangered. And come back in the box. Yeah, yeah, come Imagine back how in many people left their father's house but uh, they were brought uh, back to their father's exactly. in the box yeah. and yeah. caught the casket. Uh -huh. yeah. so. they, they, are, they, are, they can't defend themselves. If, if to say they were sent into to be like a a, a military, in a military outfit, you, they will defend themselves. They will have things to defend themselves. They will be part of an army. Combat. But here, they are just sent there and they are left at uh, anyone's mercy. So we. But it, there was a time when Senator proposed the idea of military training for NYC, and it was turned down. Remember now, that, uh, that was under no, the no, no, even even there there was was the there's still a three weeks right from the beginning. Right, right from the beginning, Senator it was raised. Right now. from the inception of NYC, it was raised. Well, you know, we were a military rule at that time, yeah. and the military did not like it. Oh. Although, ironically, every NYC station is headed by military men. Yeah, by uh, uh, brigadier general. Uh, general still. Uh, but they didn't like the idea. So we need to look at the insecurity in the land and ask ourselves whether in the light of the insecurity that is going on, which may need to, we may not need to adjust because um, insecurity is not going to go away easily. We, you have a situation where Boko Haram, yeah, ISIS I and see. all that are growing. Above us, you have uh, all kinds of things going on in Mali, Chad and all that and all that and all that. So we, we, like I said, you don't have big projects like this without sitting back after some time and reflecting. Come back, sit down and reflect on what you are doing. What are the challenges? What is the future? What is the forward way forward? I, I, I don't see, at 50, you, you should expect, I don't know whether there's such a colloquium of them coming back to seriously talk about True, yeah. what's the future of NYC, given all the challenges that it's facing. What are the next 50 years going to look like? What, are we going to move forward towards a paramilitary something, or are we, or is it giving us bang for the buck, or is it not? And with these redeployments, what's going on? We need to sit down and think of it, mm. reflect for the future, plan for the future. Other nations which progress, this is what they do. There's no perfect anything. Every time you come and you fine tune and you think about it, but you must always do it honestly for your own progress. Fantastic. Profound. All right. So I believe we can do great things within these 12 months. We only need to intentionally create the enabling environment to make it happen. Stephen Aguirre is next after the break. Please stay with us.